Wei is the newest champion added to the Rift, a brooding painter who creates brilliant art in order to confront Ionia's criminals and comfort their victims. He's the latest artillery mage that can snipe enemies from a distance or cause the entire enemy team to spiral into despair from massive AoE damage. And Riot has truly outdone themselves as Hui now holds the record for the champion with the largest number of abilities in League of Legends, 11 total. Don't worry though, as making things easy to understand is kind of our whole thing here at Skillcapped. By the end of this guide, you'll not only understand exactly how to play Hui, but also be able to immediately hop into games and start carrying. But really quick, if you're feeling stuck where you just can't rank up, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses tailored for every single role. And the best part is you can try our service completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back, no questions asked. So click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted. All right, first things first, you need to know how Hui's abilities work. Each ability will represent one of his moods. When you select one, you put him into that mood and are given three spells to pick from. His Q represents his anger and are where his damaging spells are located. When you press Q, you'll see your spell bar change to three new spells to pick from. Your Q will shoot a fireball that explodes, your W will shoot a lightning bolt at the target location, and your E will create a volcanic shockwave with lava that lingers after. Now, if you enter any mood and decide you don't want to cast any of the spells, you can just press R to exit the mood with no downside. Now, his W mood represents peacefulness and are where his buffing spells are located. Again, selecting this mood gives you three new spells to pick from. Your Q will form a water current, giving you and your allied champions bonus movement speed. Your W summons a pool of water, creating a protective zone that shields you and your allies. And your E will surround you with three swirling flares that will empower your next three basic attacks or abilities to deal bonus damage and restore mana. And finally, his E represents anguish and are where his crowd control spells are located. Selecting it will give you the three following spells to pick from. Your Q will launch a projectile that fears and damages the enemy hit. Your W will toss an eyeball that will lock onto the nearest enemy to both root and damage them, and your E will conjure a jaw that pulls enemies to the center, dealing damage and applying a slow. Now, despite the basic abilities being overwhelming due to the number of them, Wei's passive is simple. Damaging an enemy champion with two different abilities within four seconds will create an explosion beneath them, dealing damage to all enemies in the area. So, we could press E to enter the anguish mood, then W to toss an eyeball that damages and roots, then, while the enemy is rooted, we can press Q to enter his angry mood, then W to call down lightning, which does damage and activates our passive. Hui's ultimate is also fairly simple. You launch a projectile, when it hits an enemy, it will cause an aura to grow over three seconds. Both the enemy hit and all enemies within it will take damage and be slowed. At the end of the duration, or when the target dies, the aura explodes to deal massive damage. Now, with this many spells, Hui is naturally overwhelming at the amount of choices you will have. But this is also what makes him so powerful, as he's able to adapt to whatever the situation calls for. In fact, knowing what spell to use in what situation is the exact skill you need to master in order to become great at Hui. So, let's just do that. We'll break down the game into different situations to learn what abilities you should be using in each one. So first, let's focus on laning. For his damaging abilities found in his Q mood, the spell you'll be using the most is his QE. This is because it's his main wave clear ability. It not only does damage when the shockwave erupts, but the lava that lingers after will do damage over time. So the majority of the time, you'll just be using this in lane to push and then position yourself so the enemy has to run through it to get to you, keeping yourself protected and guaranteeing the push lead. In comparison, your QQ is what you'll be using the second most as it's your poke tool. Here, you can see I'm facing an enemy Hui who doesn't know what he's doing. He uses his QW to call down lightning. With his only spell being on cooldown, I move aggressively to zone him from the wave and land my QQ as poke. You don't want to use QE here as that can be easily dodged. Basically, a typical scenario you'll find yourself in is like this, starting out using your QE to get the push lead. Then once you have cemented the push lead, you can switch to using QQ for poke. So if the enemy Hui from earlier was making a mistake by using QW, his lightning, when exactly should you be using that spell? Well, there's one mechanic you need to know. Your lightning will do bonus damage to isolated or crowd control targets based on how low in health they are. So, in lane, it's simple, you really only use it as a way to finish off low health enemies. A nice trick you can use, though, is push a wave, then while the enemy is last hitting under tower, you can actually run out of vision to pretend you're recalling or roaming. Then, look to land a QW on them as they stand still to last it. It's worth noting, if you just try to place your lightning right under the feet of a moving opponent, they can always walk out of it. This is why you either time it for when they're running away from you and place it slightly in front of them, this way they run into it and it prevents them from dodging it. Or, you should try and time it so they're standing still to last it or casting an ability. All right, now let's move on to his W spells. In lane, you pretty much only ever want to use his WE. This is because his W has a steep mana cost, but you'll actually gain more mana back than it costs with WE. If you try to use other W spells in lane early on, you're pretty much guaranteed to run yourself out of mana. On top of that, your WE will make both your auto attacks and abilities apply bonus damage, and auto attacking with it will actually count as a second damaging ability, allowing you to activate your passive. This ability is incredibly powerful and makes your level two very strong. So if you get that early push lead level 
level one and spike level two on the opponent, look to use W, E, start auto attacking them, then use Q, E if they're behind minions. Remember, this counts as two different abilities, so it will activate your passive's damage. Alternatively, if you don't have minions blocking them, just cast W, E into Q, Q. For now, as you're learning Quay, just keep it easy on yourself by mainly only using W, E in lane. We'll teach the alternative uses later in this guide. Also, be aware that your W, E bonus damage will apply to all minions hit by your spells. So if you're level 9 and use Q, E, and it doesn't clear the casters with one spell, it's most likely due to you not using W, E for the bonus damage. And next up, we have his E spells. The main spell you'll be using in lane is EE. -E. This is because it's nearly impossible to dodge with how fast it will come out. If anyone ever stands near minions, look to land an EE -E into a QE. This will do great damage to both them and the wave, as it also procs your passive. In addition to that, it massively slows the enemy, preventing them from fighting back. We'll be going over more combos and detail later, but just know this is the primary way you'll be poking and trading in lane. Notice how after we land the EE -E here, I can't land a QQ fireball since the minions block it. This is why you'll typically use QE as a follow-up as it goes through minions. And remember, from the last section, try to activate your WE before you do this, as it will apply the bonus damage to both of those abilities while giving you mana back. So here, WE into QE, then EE to pull them into our Lava Fisher. Now, you're probably wondering at this point, what about all the other spells? Well, early on, those are primarily going to be used for escaping ganks. Since pushing is such a big part of Huey's playstyle, you want to make sure to have your E available when you're very overextended. Your EQ, which is your fear, is insanely powerful at helping you escape. You can see here, time it to interrupt Pantheon's W stun, and since he's feared, he's now running away from you. Flash over the wall to escape and drop WW to shield the poison damage, QE to create a damaging slow to continue kiting, and our fears back off cooldown, so EQ, and you can start to see how important this spell is for staying alive. Now, one thing to note is when using your fear, you don't always fear the person ganking you. In this case, it's a bard support. He's not a threat. The real threat is the enemy mid, so we fear them instead. This allows us to casually walk out of the gank safely. And keep in mind, once you've casted your fear, it will still go through even if you get crowd control, so you can time it right as the enemy lands their CC so they can't follow it up with damage. So EQ, your fear, is your main escape tool, but your EW, the eyeball, can sometimes be better. For example, here, Elise is ganking us, we can't use EQ since it's a projectile and Elise will just repel over it to dodge it. In these spots where you can't hit your fear, you want to place an eyeball on top of yourself. This way, when the enemy does jump you, they'll be rooted. Once rooted, you can use your QE for the slow effect and escape to safety. Do be aware though, the eyeball shoots out a projectile that can be blocked by any enemy, including minions. So it's important that you don't drop it near minions, you'll be walking around, or it won't do anything for you. Here's another great example. We can't use our fear here since Khaled's ultimate is immune to that, so we know to throw the eyeball on top of ourselves. Once rooted, we use use QE for the slow so we can get to a safe distance. In this case, we can turn on him, so we use WQ for the movement speed to chase him, then alt him into a lightning, and finish him off shortly after with a flash EE. And this makes a perfect transition to level 6, as once you get your ultimate, you have some serious solo kill threat. If you poke your enemy laner near half health, look to land your ult at any point. Your ult grows in size as it applies a bigger and bigger slow. The key here is to time your QW lightning right as your ult explodes. This is when they're slowed the most and are low enough in health that your lightning will do a ton of bonus damage to finish them off. If the enemy has a bit more health, you can still look to land an ult on them, just use your QE instead to put the lava fissure beneath them, as they'll be too slow to move away from it. Then as the enemy runs away, you can land a QW lightning to finish them off. It's worth noting, unless you're super fed, you probably won't 100 to 0 your lane opponent. For example, here's basically the maximum amount of damage you can do in a combo. We start WE for the damage bonus, then EW for the eyeball root. These are two different spells, so it activates our passive's damage. We then land our ult while they're rooted, and then time our QW lightning right as the ult explodes. Again, your ult and QW are two different spells, so we activate a second passive proc. It's almost enough to 100 to 0 them, but not quite. So for this reason, your goal should be to land a bit of poke first. At least get the opponent to around 70% of their max HP. HP before you look to all in with your ultimate. And that's basically everything you need to know for laning. So let's move on to team fights. In team fights, you mainly want to control the battlefield with your QE Lava Fisher and your EW Eyeball. Once an enemy activates your eyeball, they get rooted for an insane amount of time. This can be a great time to ult them while they're rooted, and then use the trick we taught you earlier to activate QW to snipe them at the end of it for the bonus damage. Often, just throwing out your eyeball at max range can be an effective strategy. It can be hard for enemies to both spot it and avoid it. If they accidentally walk into it, even for a second, they're rooted for an eternity. And that often means they're dead from an alt and Q spell follow-up. And remember, this is important, your QW lightning does bonus damage both if the enemy is isolated, but also if they're crowd controlled, which being rooted counts towards. So you can throw your eyeball out at max range, run out of vision, and if any low health enemy walks into it, they're taking massive bonus damage from the lightning even if teammates are around them. Just throwing out your QE for slow and damage, and then eyeballs out at max range, keeps you extremely safe and far away, and it only takes one mistake for an easy kill. If someone is full health and gets rooted, you can just land your alt into the lightning combo to take them down instead. 
As a general rule though, you want enemies to fight into you. Here the fight starts and Kled ults us. We immediately use QE for the slow and damage. Notice how the enemy Caitlyn can't follow Kled due to the slow and is just taking a ton of damage. Now let's pause here. If you're under any threat of dying, like a Zed jumping you, you always want to use your fear to instantly CC them and push them away. But here, Kled is isolated from his team and doesn't have enough damage to take me down. In these spots, always use your eyeball for that super long route. Afterwards, we use WW, we're being dove, we need the shield to protect us. Now it's important to note, ulting someone diving you can be a great kiting tool since it applies both damage and a massive slow. Not only to that champion, but any champions inside the aura, you can see how hard it is for Nautilus to chase us because of this. Our Q is back up, so we cast another QE to slow and damage, and again, his teammates simply can't follow. By the end of this, we've taken barely any damage, and two enemies are dead. The most common way you'll be teamfighting is basically maximizing your AoE damage. For example, here, our team is tower diving. We throw an eyeball at the enemy front line into a QE. This both prevents them from engaging on us, but also running away. Once rooted, we're guaranteed to land our alt. You can see how, just with the Lava Fisher, our eyeball, and ultimate, how we get a passive proc on Nautilus and Caitlyn, and just the sheer amount of AoE damage and slows happening. Here's another great example. The fight starts, we begin by throwing our eyeball, and then our QE Lava Fisher. Once the enemy is rooted, we hit them with our ult, and now they can barely move, taking an insane amount of AoE damage. For this reason, the best place to fight is in the jungle near tight corridors. You can throw your eyeball to cover a choke point, making it near impossible for an enemy to dodge. And as we've shown, once rooted, you often have enough damage in your kit to take them down by yourself. Otherwise, a root followed with a QE can provide enough crowd control for your teammates to slay them for you. It's also important for you to understand how powerful Zhonya's can be on Hue. Here, we're being dope, so we drop our eyeball into an ult, then we use Zhonya's. You can see how much damage this does while you're completely invulnerable. We then use our summoner spells to get out, and finish our escape with an eyeball into a W speed boost and a fissure behind us for good measure. Exact same idea here. The enemy Wukong flashes to ult onto us, so we react by ulting them into Zhonya's. As we come out of stasis, we land a point blank QQ to finish them off. All right, with teamfighting out of the way, let's quickly cover some more advanced tips and tricks. First, be aware your QW lightning is fantastic at stealing objectives like Dragon and Baron. Additionally, if you finish clearing a wave and have nothing to do in lane, you can use your WE and auto the Raptor camp three times while you kite them to get some free mana back. You should also be aware your eyeball root is godly against any kind of teleport, since they'll just spawn right on top of it and get instantly rooted to their death. We also highly recommend trying out this new Riot setting, as it should make playing Quay far easier for the majority of players. So, usually when you cast Quay's abilities, if you try to cast them outside of their range, Quay will walk forward until he's in range, then cast them. If you go to your settings, into the game tab, you'll find the new setting to turn on, called Clamp Cast Target Location. This will make it so that now when you cast an ability outside of the range, you won't walk forward, and it will just instantly cast at your max range. We also highly recommend using a specific smart cast setup with Hui. So if you're someone who uses normal cast instead of smart casting, it is very punishing on this champion. This is due to having to press one button to select a mood, then another button to select a spell, and then left clicking to cast it. That's three actions you have to input and will make your reaction time extremely slow. For this reason, as a default, you should smart cast all of Hui's abilities, and to be clear, that's with the replace quick cast turned off. However, this presents a new problem. It will now be hard to aim your QW lightning, as you won't know when an enemy is outside of your max range. The first solution to this is the easiest, simply hover your mouse over the spell to see its range. The second solution is more exact. If you rebind your normal cast to shift plus the ability, so shift Q, shift W, shift E, shift R, this will allow you to bring up the indicator in situations where you have to be more precise. This way, you can still be super fast with smart casting, but if you need to line up a skill shot or see a range, you can just press shift plus that ability to bring up the indicator. Now, with Wei being a new champion as we release this guide, let's quickly talk about what role he'll be best in and find the most success. His primary role will be mid lane. After all, this is where Riot intended him to be played. I want you to think of mid laners like Ziggs, Zerath, Lux, and Velkons. These are the types of mid laners that are similar to him. Now, as I said that, a lot of you probably thought, well, a lot of those champions are actually played as support too. And this is why Hui's secondary role will be support. With that being said though, Hui's kit having so many abilities makes him extremely adaptable to the point that he can actually be flex picked in nearly every single lane. It's not like mage AD carries are that off meta, with both Ziggs and Vigar being prime examples of it working in the AD carry role to great success. Obviously, top will feel the most unorthodox and likely the weakest role for him, but there are plenty examples of mage working as top lane picks that on paper seem terrible, so I wouldn't completely count it out. Now let's talk about Hui's summoner spells, runes, and builds. When playing Hui mid, it's simple. You want to run flash barrier when facing any assassin mid laners. Since you're a mobile, this will help you survive against them. When facing other mages, you want to run flash teleport. This will allow you to keep up more lane pressure while avoiding the common scenario of trading with the enemy mid, then them teleporting back to lane with full health and mana while you're stuck being low. 
For runes, you want Arcane Comment as your keystone. This not only helps you with your poke in lane, but has amazing synergy with his abilities. Since you're constantly applying slows and crowd control, it means the Comment pretty much always lands. Additionally, Arcane Comment gets its cooldown reduced when damaging champions. This counts for AoE and damage over time as well. So with how often you'll be throwing out your Lava Fishers, you'll have ridiculous uptime in teamfights. From there, you grab Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch. For your secondary runes, we recommend taking Eyeball Collector and Ultimate Hunter. Wei's Ultimate is just such a key part to impacting fights that have Having the reduced cooldown really helps making sure you always have it up. You then want to take an attack speed rune. This is primarily due to your WE in the early game. The attack speed really helps weave in more auto attacks to proc that bonus damage. Then take adaptive force and either armor or magic resist depending on who you're facing in lane. Now for builds it's a bit awkward as Riot are releasing Hui a month before all the items are changed. For this reason, we've created two sections in this guide, his build for Season 13 and his build for Season 14. For Season 13, go Leandris, Sork Shoes, and Tizanias. Leandris is amazing on Hui because he just constantly has it ticking away on opponents with his consistent AoE damage. You then get Zanya since you're on a mobile mage and it helps keep you alive, but also because it sets you up to make the plays we showed earlier. From there, you'll need a Void Staff and Death Cap, but your sixth slot is situational. Picking up an early Dark Seal and turning it into a Mage Eyes if you get fed can be great in this slot. Otherwise, look to build situational items like Banshees, Morello, or Demonic Embrace, depending on what you're facing. Or if you really want to, you can build more damage instead with Horizon Focus being best in slot. For Season 14, the build is much different. You want to rush the new item Caster's Companion. This is a fantastic, well-rounded damage item, and it's best against a wide variety of team compositions. Then make sure to finish your Sork Shoes, and your third item is now Situational. You build Storm Surge against squishy team compositions, and Leandris when facing tanky compositions. After this, you need to build Azanias as the active is too valuable to pass up on Hue, and for your last two items, build a Void Staff and Death Cap so you're damage scales effectively into the late game. All right, and now you have everything you need to start stomping games this way. For everything else you need to rank up fast, there's a service at skillcap.com. At Skillcap, we focus on the things that actually help you climb ranks and simplify them so they're easy to understand. If you're feeling stuck where you just can't rank up no matter how hard you try, then Skillcapped is the solution you've been looking for. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses tailored for every role. Still skeptical? Don't worry, as you can try out Skillcapped completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you'll get your money back. No questions asked. You can unlock this game changing opportunity right now through the link below. So what are you waiting for? Click the link to get the rank you've always wanted. All right, and that will wrap things up. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.